The last may not have been heard of the 2014 recruitment stampede in the Nigerian Immigration Service. Besides this, what's the full import of the passport reforms being introduced? As the federal government plans to tighten border security, how prepared is the Nigerian Immigration Service? It's question time. Welcome to the program. I'm Benga Ashiru. You can also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. At a point where Nigeria faces an overlapping challenge of trans-border banditry, human trafficking, alleged extortion by some officials, and unnecessary bottlenecks in passport processing and renewal, the Comptroller General of Nigerian Immigration Service, Mohamed Wabandade, swings into action, reading out the Riot Act of Zero Tolerance to corrupt practices and poor performance to the immigration officials. Channels Television was at the Nigerian Immigration Headquarters in Abuja, where we caught up with the immigration chief. Join us in this exclusive interview. CGI Mohamed Babandede, thank you for joining us on this episode of Question Time. You are mounting an intense advocacy on passport reforms. What's the full import of these reforms? Uh, we are decentralizing the system, which was initially in the center, uh, so that it will be much easier for people to get these services at the grassroots level. I'm talking of two things first. Uh, issuance of passports to women who are changing their data because of marriage, divorce, or widowship. Uh, this particular system, initially, it has been run only in the headquarters. It means women travel as far as from Meduguri, despite the security challenges, or as far as from Lagos or Sokoto to come to Abuja to change their data due to marriage or divorce. Uh, you can agree with me, this costs money, takes time, and also involves risk. We are saying you can do it in your state of origin. The second one, issue of lost. This lost passport, some of it could be criminal, but I know many of such cases have to do with accidents, theft, robbery, and many other things, which is not the entire fault of the applicant or the holder. We also want to make it to be done at the state level instead of coming to Abuja. Right. So it makes the job easier for the people. We understand that you've issued a 48-hour directive to passport officers and also the foreign desk processing officers to ensure the processing of the passports. Isn't that too drastic considering the old status quo? We, we have responded greatly. Uh, to assure you, uh, any pending cases that they could not solve is beyond them. Uh, go to ICOI, passport office, which is the largest passport issuing center in the country. Or London abroad, we have issued them booklets and we are reducing the congestion by attending to people as they come. So I'm proud to say that people are complying and things are working well. We understand that this directive is coming as a result of poor performance and poor service delivery from immigration officers at the passport post. But what are you doing to ensure an effective and efficient service delivery? Uh, averagely, per annum, we issue up to 1 million, 1 million 200 booklets per annum to all passport applicants in Nigeria. That's our average consumption level. Uh, but these documents, we get it through partnership. Government should be very, very proud of this type of partnership, that government has not put a cobble into the system, but government is earning money from the system. So it is efficient that there is a system where government is not putting money and service is being given to, uh, to Nigerians, government is making profit out of it. Uh, in that side, we can say we are doing well. But as we started, as you are aware, the challenges comes from expertise, learning process, uh, the officers have to learn how things are done. We started since 2007, and I'm very proud to, to say that we have expert officers who can handle this. But corruption creates problem. Uh, officers felt that when they delay issuance of passport, they can earn extra money. That's the reason why I gave this directive, that things should be killed as quickly as possible and give 24 hours. A response came. So if people know that booklets are there, they can get book passport as quickly as possible. There's nothing to worry. Scarcity is the cause of corruption. Uh, delay is also a sign that people want money from you. I'm happy to tell you that we have tackled that challenge and passports have been issued as quickly as possible. Uh, most of these reforms border on capacity building. So are there any provision for training of officials to ensure efficient service delivery? We call all the passport officers 
from the, all over the Federation to come to Abuja for a training. If we want to efficient and effective service delivery, we need to tell them how they should do it better. Uh, this I have done with the conjunction of service providers. We get booklets from uh, Irish Smart Technology. We get technology for payment from New Works. All of the service providers were invited. We discuss the challenges they have and we told them how best to tackle it, including even how to keep, keep booklets. Could you clarify the aspect of passport fees? We, we have three categories of passport fees for Nigerians. Uh, first, we have fees to be paid called administrative fee for applicants who want to change their data, except women. Uh, I think we are very gender sensitive that we have exempted women from paying penalty for change of data. So anybody who applies for change of data, when I say change of data, if you come and tell us that, look, the time you got this passport, my date of birth is wrong. Instead of 21st, it is supposed to be 20th. You have to pay a fee of 30,000 non-refundable fee, excluding bank charges. Everybody pays that before we tackle his problem. It is none. Passport for children who have not reached the age of uh, 18, they pay 16,500. Those who are above uh, uh, the age of 18, before they reach 60, they pay 18,500. So the system of payment is segregation. What I mean segregation, we have made a system that the children and the elderly pay less. Uh, this is a good idea because uh, the children are going to schools you know, the parents are still taking care of them. So before you celebrate the age of 18, you pay less. Also, if you celebrate the age of 60 and above, you're an adult. You, you have served the country and retired at the age of 60. I don't know what the media do, but in public service after 60, you retire. We, you pay less. So you can see even in the payment segregation, we want the working force to pay more for passport protection. That's what we do. But the change we are effecting is that we want to put the charges fees available in the passport offices. Initially, they were not there. Are there any provision for online payments? You know, we are very proud as a service to tell you that we started online payment and e-payment before many agencies of government. If you go to the immigration website, www.immigration.gov.ng, you will see all our options for payment. That option of payment will tell you what to do. For example, I want to reissue passport. It will give you the price of reissue and give you choices. Do you want 64 pages or 32 pages? It will give you. If you say, I want to pay official passport, it will also give you the price of official passport. 64 pages or 32 pages. If you sh it will ask you, even if you want to pay for 32 pages, your age, are you below the age of 18, a minor, or are you an elderly statesman? If you are a minor, you pay 8,550. So does elderly people pay? When you have celebrated the age of 60, you pay that amount of money. So the choices are there on website. I don't know why even Nigerians will begin to come to passport office with cash. What are you doing to stop corruption, extortion, and the practice of returns to superior officers from officers at the post? If those below level can continue to bring money to those on top, to sustain those who are on top, you don't expect justice to take place. You don't expect corruption to be fought because they have to look for money by all means from anywhere to give you as a leader. We have canceled that. I told them we don't need the money and I've told their immediate bosses not to collect. I think we have reduced a great burden for them. They are not under pressure to bring money. Secondly, we have equally decided to provide the little resources we have for them to maintain their offices. Uh, if you do that, you are not putting much pressure for them. You don't need to give money to anybody. You can use the little resources given to you by government to sustain your office. And also, we want to reduce the number of trips they make to Abuja. You may also join in this conversation by sending your comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time. How prepared is the immigration boss in his plan to stop the practice of soliciting office of top government officials to lobby themselves for juicy transfer. Find out from the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, Mohamed Bambandidi, after the break. <laughs>